Hey guys, it's uh, Marshall here with you, and uh, I'm going to do, do a new video today. Um, and this one is going to be about the uh, Legends Quest plugin. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a video, so uh, you have to bear with me a little bit here. <laughs> um, so what I've got done is, um, in preparation for um, using the Quest plugin, I've created a, a module, which you've seen me do before and it's just got the one area in it and as you can see under scripts I've already got the Legends AI plugin and the Legends Spawn plugin installed in it and and that's it just those two plugins are installed uh, the Quest plugin is installed but it's not imported into the module yet so it's actually I ran through the setup exe I'm not gonna go through that in the video it's that's pretty simple stuff so um, but we're ready with a module and we're ready to apply the uh, the Legends Quest plugin to it. Uh, this video series is going to be um, a rather lengthy one and I'm going to try and break it up into chunks if I can because the Quest plugin can do uh, quite a lot of things and um, you know from simple you know FedEx uh, quests to you know large-scale adventures um, the way it operates is it it basically takes a collection of you know small quests you put them together to create an adventure or however you want to do it um, it just kind of gives you the tools to be able to assemble um, tasks and things that a player can do or a group of players can do and, and puts them together and, and you know create an outcome so you can you can actually use it in many ways um, and you know you can be a little bit creative and do some interesting things with it so I'm gonna start with the very basics um, I notice a lot of uh, you know, when I'm looking at the views of the videos, a lot of people will watch the first video of the series and maybe the second video, and then they kind of, you know, peter out and, and don't watch the remaining ones. Um, I just want to let you know that it's important to watch uh, all the videos of the series. I'm not just saying that, just try and get you to watch the video. It's important, especially with the Quest plugin, because the first few videos are going to show really simple type quests, uh, really simple type FedEx quests, um, nothing complicated. Um, and I don't want you to get discouraged that the Quest plugin will only do those kinds of quests because it can do, you know, if you put it together correctly, it, it can do uh, quite a lot of really interesting quests and, and adventures. So what you want to do is make sure that uh, make sure that um, you watch all the videos. And that way, late in the later videos, I'll show examples of you know more advanced type adventures or how to put an adventure together. So the first thing I'm going to do is get right started, get started here, and uh, import the uh, resources. So let's do that right away. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to just talk about this area. Um, I found this area on the vault, and I don't. I found it a really long time ago, and I don't remember who made it. And if you're the person watching this video and you made this area, please let me know because I forget who it was, and I for even forget the original name of the area. This is not one of my areas. This is just an area I found off the vault, but it's just a, it's just a little village that I thought um, might be useful for uh, demonstrating some quests, um, filling it up with some NPCs and and whatnot. So uh, what we're gonna do next is uh, is start by importing the uh, the resources. So let's uh, let's just close this area here and get started. Okay, so as normal, um, the uh, ERF that we're going to import is uh, stored in uh, you know the my documents never nice to ERF folder. It's gonna be called leg underscore quest ERF. So we'll import that and. As previously discussed, whenever we're using a newer version of a plugin versus an older version of a plugin, we always want to overwrite these. If all of our plugins are the same version, it doesn't matter. But if we have, uh, you know, newer versions, we're going to want to say yes. Um, I know because I've made this is that the Quest plugin is version 1.7, so I'm going to want to make sure I say yes to all of these. So I'm just going to just going to yes all the way through here. There we go, and then I can see that I've got the uh, the quest scripts are all all in here now. Next thing I want to do is fire up the master configurator, and that will be under our plugins and Legends Master Configurator. As you can see, the quest plugin is listed right there. So we'll fire up this, and as you can see, the AI plugin and the Spawn plugin are already active uh, on this module, so I don't need to repeat that. 
Uh, however, I will activate the Quest plugin and we'll fill in some database information. So this is uh, the database information that I'm using uh, through NWNX. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to put in the server's IP where my database is sitting, port, and the uh, name of the database, which is, uh, oh, I'm forgetting, uh, I think it's the Legends Quest plugin. That's the one I'm using. NWN2 user. There we go. Let's try that. There we go. Good. So uh, we fill in our database information and we have finish. Simple as that. And the uh, next part we want to do is actually fire up the Quest plugin itself. So here's the Quest plugin. We'll go into File and Configure. And uh, this is relatively simple. I'll go through these quickly. Uh, this is the max number of quests. So uh, this is the total number of quests a player is allowed to have in their journal. It's it's kind of up to you how many you want a player to have. You can have them let them have 50 at a time, 10 at a time. Um, sometimes it's valuable to control how many they can run simultaneously. And you know it's it's totally configurable. I just have it at 15 for default. Um, Typically, when you start getting into this quest plugin, you'll find that you'll start making a lot of quests, and uh, you know you may want to you may want to limit how many how many a player can be on at one time. So this is that number. Uh, journal override. Now, when you're using the quest plugin in game, uh, normally with the stock uh, journal in the in the game, you just hit the J button. And up pops the you know the built-in journal. If we're using journal override with uh, with the quest plugin, when you hit J in game, you won't get the stock journal anymore. You'll actually get the legends journal. So the legends quest system has its own journal. Uh, so if you're using journal override, pressing J will override the stock journal. Now this has a uh, you know an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is is that you no longer have to you know deal with the original journal you know it just you don't use it anymore uh, the disadvantage is is that if your world already has quests that use the old journal and you want to add the legends quest plug into it they're two separate journals um, so you don't want to re completely remove the old journal because you know you'll you'll mess up your original quests so this gives you the option if you use journal override that means all quests will use the new journal um, so that means you'll be using exclusively legends plugin uh, quest plugin quests however if you're not like that and you do need your old original journal still in game you can turn that off now what this means is that instead of the player having to press J to bring up the new legends quest journal um, they'll actually uh, get an item and they'll use the item to bring up the journal, so it's just an item in their inventory. You know, they right-click use, and uh, it'll it'll activate the journal that way. That way, you can keep the original uh, journal intact. So, if brand new world or a brand new module, um, you want to use or convert all your quests over to uh, the Legends Quest plugin, then uh, it's good to use this because it makes it nice and easy. Uh, but if you do have a reason that you need to keep the original journal, then you'll want to turn that off. Deed shouting. Uh, one of the aspects of the quest plugin is uh, is a type of quest called deeds. Uh, when a player completes a deed, um, you have the option to let the entire server know that a person has completed a deed. A deed is typically the defeat of you know X type monsters. You know uh, the way the way my persistent world, the way the legends persistent world works, is that you don't get experience for killing anything. Um, all experience is given out through quests. Uh, and deeds and lore books and things. So the way deeds work is you can say uh, kill 50 kobolds completes a deed and you get an experience point reward. Um, once you kill 50 kobolds you can do a shout saying you know such and such player has completed this deed and defeated 50 kobolds kind of thing. So that's what deed shouting is for. The quest icons um, this is something you can just turn on and off, and I'll, and I'll show what those are. These are basically, if you've ever played an MMORPG uh, before, like, you know, World of Warcraft or anything like that, you'll see uh, quest givers or quest participants with little icons over their heads signifying whether they want to talk to you or not. This is what these are. So uh, we'll, we'll demonstrate those when we, when we actually go in, but this is if you want them on or off or not. And again, all quest-related uh, tables, this is the prefix that you want to use.